Hi, it's Matt here from Pilot Practice Exams, and let's have a look at the magnetic compass, and in particular the errors. So first of all, let's have a quick look at just how a compass works. So when it comes to a magnet, this is a magnet here, they have a positive and a negative end, or what we call a north-south end. So, and the ma magic rule with magnets is that opposites attract, and that's why you can get some magnets that want to pull together, and when you turn them around the other way, they want to push apart. So, in other words, when you put a south end towards the north end, they will pull together and they will want to join. When you put a south end towards the south end, they want to push apart. So, that's the basics of how a compass works. So, how does that work when we apply it to the world and to an aircraft? Well, if we imagine the Earth spinning on its poles, and there's its true south pole and its true north pole, and the Earth's rotating, okay, it's rotating around, and it's spinning around those poles. Now, for various reasons, including the magna core and, and lava flows and things like that, there's this magnetic pole here, and I'll just explain a little bit more about that in a sec, because it's offset around about... Uh, I think it's about 1,300. It's constantly moving around about 40 or 50 um, kilometers per year at the moment. So it's offset. So when we actually have a magnetic compass, it's going to point towards the magnetic north, which is going to be like that. And just the same as any other magnet would make this thing spin around, the magnetic force, so will the movement of that pole. And so will something in our aircraft. If we put anything in our aircraft that has a magnetic force on this compass, then what it's going to do is effectively spin that compass and it's not going to be accurate. So we need to be very careful and that's why we need to cross-check where our compass is pointing before we take off. Now when it comes to the magnetic forces of the poles, we can look at this the true north pole actually has a south magnetic field okay the true south pole has a north magnetic field and that's where the red on our compass points towards the blue and the blue points towards the red because remember opposites attract so if you can't remember that and you're sitting in an exam just remember where does the red end of the point compass point and it points towards that Okay, so then if we scroll down a little bit further, let's think about how that affects our aircraft compass. So when we're sitting in our aircraft here, we're looking at a compass that's in front of us, sitting up on our dash somewhere. And we're looking through this little viewing window here. And remember, opposites attract. So if we're heading north, okay, the south end of our compass is actually going to be at the back of the compass. We're going to see north. Now, remember the magnetic field, if we're heading north, the magnetic field is going to be down here at the bottom of the Earth behind us. And the North Pole and the southern end of the Earth's magnetic field is going to be ahead of us. So here's what's going to happen. That we're going to see north on the compass. The northern pole of our compass needle is going to be up in front of us. And the southern end is going to be closest to us. And that's how it's going to align. Now, you'll understand this a little bit further as we move around. So let's look what happens when we're heading east. And I've turned the compass a little bit to represent that magnetic offset. So again, the compass remains the same. The compass doesn't move. All it moves is this window around the outside. The viewing window moves with the aircraft. So the aircraft actually moves around the compass. The compass remains relatively station, stationary. When you accelerate in certain directions, east or west, or when you turn, the compass will actually turn a little bit. But in general level flight, the compass doesn't move. You actually move around the compass. So here's when you're heading east, you're looking at the east, but notice the poles still haven't moved. The south hasn't moved. The west hasn't moved, the north, the east hasn't moved. What's moved is you've moved around the west and you're flying to the east. So you're looking through the viewing window and you're seeing that east. And if we scroll back up here, look, east was already there. So the compass didn't move. We just moved around it. So just to show you all four directions right now, if we're heading east, again, the compass hasn't moved. Look, the compass is the same in every direction. It's just us and the viewing window that has moved around, okay? So it's very important to understand.
And the next thing to understand is where where down here at Australia, and the South Pole, the true South Pole is down here somewhere, and the magnetic South Pole is just over there a little bit to the west. If we go up the top of the world, right to the very top, the true magnetic pole, the you know, as the axis the Earth spins around, is around about there somewhere. But the magnetic pole is around about here somewhere. So it's offset a little bit. So that has another implication. What it means is no matter where we go on the Earth, our maps are going to be out by a little bit more or differently because remember we have our lines going north-south and they're pointing towards our true. And if that is offset, then that means everywhere we go on the map, then the true north is going to be in a slightly different location. So that compass error is called magnetic variation, sometimes also referred to as ma magnetic declaration. And basically, here's how it works. If you grab this compass here and you move it around, and we'll just shrink it down in a sec. So let's make it a lot smaller. So as you can see, no matter where I go, it's going to need to point in a slightly different direction. All right? And even if I move up and down one of those uh, vertical lines on the map, as you can see, the variation would change for it to remain pointing at the magnetic North Pole. So that's our magnetic variation. And there are maps that they constantly map out that shows the magnetic variation. And there's going to be a special one done soon because the pole has been moving faster than normal. So they will have to redo that. So that's magnetic variation. You need to look at a chart to find that. Now, magnetic deviation is caused by local magnetic fields within the, or around the aircraft. So, for example, if we put something on the dash and it affects the where the compass points, that is our magnetic variation. And we would have a card on the dash that would tell us how much our compass is out. So if we put that there and we put a magnetic field somewhere in or around our aircraft, and all of a sudden that causes our, uh, our compass to point in a slightly different direction, then that's magnetic deviation. And you'll have a deviation card on the dash of the aircraft. And every time your aircraft goes in for 100 hourly or for its two-year uh, instrument checks, they will compare where your compass is pointing compared to other devices that they use to measure magnetic north. Mated flight where we're just flying north, south, east or west with no turns and no acceleration. Our magnetic uh, pointer or bar is going to sit there like that. And this is the pin going through the middle of it or the rotational axis for it axis for it. So, but the center of gravity is offset. The center of gravity is up towards the North Pole on the compass. Okay, so the problem is that creates a heavy end. It means this end is heavier than this end. And if we think about basic physics, we know that it takes more energy to accelerate something that's heavy than something that's light. So what that means is when we accelerate west, like when we take off that way, over to the west, the heavy end, it takes more energy to accelerate it. So the, the heavy end, with the same amount of energy trying to accelerate both sides, is going to get left behind. And that means that our compass is going to turn slightly. So in a normal situation, if we're sitting there around about here looking at a compass, we see the west, and it would be sitting like that. But as we accelerate, here's what happens. The compass actually turns around us so that the compass actually went like that and so we're still sitting here we've accelerated to the west and instead of seeing 270 we start seeing 250 and then as we decelerate what happens is the heavy end is going to swing forward so we're still sitting here and instead of seeing west we're going to see something like Instead of seeing 270 for west, we're going to see something like 280 or 290 as we decelerate. And then if we take off and accelerate to the east, so this time we're sitting over here as a pilot and we're looking at east on the compass in front of us. And what's going to happen is the whole, uh, the whole compass will have swung like that. So instead of seeing 
090 for east, we're going to see something like, uh, you know, 130 in front of us when we accelerate. And if we decelerate, the whole compass is going to swing the other way. And instead of seeing east, we're going to see something like 060. So it would actually look something like that. We'd be sitting here and seeing, say, 070, and the whole compass, including the bar inside, it would have swung around a little bit. And then after the deceleration force uh, starts to slow down, it's going to go back like that, and we're going to see east in front of us again. So that error is known as pendulosity. And what pendulosity means is basically like something hanging off something heavy, like a sign hanging off a, you know, swinging off a chain. And it swings there like a pendulum in the wind. Well, our compass is a bit like a pendulum when we accelerate and decelerate. And so we have this compass error called pendulosity. So just to recap, the first error that we get is variation. Variation is to do with where you are located on the map. It has nothing to do with that one. It's to do with where you're located on the map. And then how does that affect? So if you imagine we draw a vertical line and we come straight down, as you can imagine there, it's going to point uh, to the magnetic pole there. But if we go up that same line to the North Pole, then now it has to point over there. Whereas if there was no magnetic north and we moved down that line, sorry, turn that vertical, and we moved down that line, it would always just point towards the north. Deviation is caused by magnetic fields in and around the plane, causing the compass to move because you put something on the dash or you change something in the plane or you turn on a mobile phone and sit it beside it, things like that. So just be very, very careful of that one. And then your last one is pendulosity, which is caused by the fact that the aircraft, okay, when it moves, when it accelerates, decelerates or turns, is going, sorry, I'm looking for it, is going to turn it, cause it to swing. So that's this one here. And just remember that there's a heavy end and the heavy end is up towards the North Pole. And then that way you'll be able to work out any pendulosity errors. So if you like this, don't forget to give us a thumbs up or a comment and let us know that you liked it. I'm Matt from pilotpracticeexams.com. We have a whole bunch of practice exams for Australian pilots for RAOs, RPL, PPL, CPL, ATPL and IREX. And if you want help with passing your practice exams, head on over to pilotpracticeexams.com.